guys, welcome to Be Bold Branding. I'm Tanya Eberhardt, founder of Brandface, where we help business owners differentiate themselves, and we do that through personal branding. Hi guys, I'm Michael Carr. I'm the COO of Brandface. I was a client before, became a partner in the company, and we're the only comprehensive brand, personal brand building system across the globe. And we do these Be Bold Branding uh, episodes to help you take the fear out of putting yourself out there. And we've got a fantastic guest with us here today. He's one of our faves. We don't mind saying we love this guy. He actually went through our personal branding program not long ago. His name is Bobby Gellert and Bobby is from Westchester, New York. Um, and there's a, there's a big reason today, guys, we wanted to talk to Bobby. It's a very timely for everybody. As you guys may or may not know, the Westchester area is one of the hardest hit areas in the country with COVID-19. And Bobby's, Bobby's brand and Bobby's human being is just so positive. <laughs> Bobby is one of the most positive people that we know. And we thought that we would bring him in today to talk a little bit about his positivity and what keeps him positive throughout all of this um, economic downturn and, uh, and serious time in history. So welcome, Bobby. Thank you very much, guys. I'm happy to be here. I'm glad you both are well and safe and uh, heard uh, good and everything company's doing well so uh happy to hear all of that um you know COVID-19 is a real devastating thing and you know while I may talk about positivity in this conversation right there's a lot of terrible stories a lot of death and right so and you know there are heroes out there that are you know, real work, which we have to have immense respect for. So but that is the undercurrent because a lot of what we're going to talk about is how have we gotten through this? And it's all through positive thinking. So we can't discount everything that's really going on in the world, which is, you know, it's very devastating and we're still in it. Um, so I just needed to say that to sort of start off. But um, for me, it's all about mindset. And we're going to get into deep into the mindset and sort of how I think about all, all of that. But f for me, I excel and other people like myself sort of excel in change. And when there's uncertainty, right? A lot of people typically put their head in the sand or they procrastinate when there's times of change or with things that they don't understand. Uh, for me, that is opportunity. I'm always going in through the outdoor, always thinking outside the box. It's just who I am and that's consistent. Um, and it's a matter of like the yogi in me, it's more of being the thermostat and not being the thermometer, right? When you're the thermostat, like you set sort of what the change is, you're the gauge. When you're the thermometer, you're more reacting to things. And that is a key mindset to have through life and to stay positive, right? To stay even keel through a whole bunch of different things. And even for me, COVID-19 has been very challenging. My business here in New York, as you pointed out, we're non-essential, right? We can't really do anything. Everything is virtual. So we've had to adjust and pivot our business I've had to you know, coach my agents through all that. I had to redesign my website. So to me, initially, it was about survival, right? Change, opportunity, got to survive first. What does this all mean? Like all those thoughts and I'm bringing my whole team with me. I'm bringing my family with me, right? Adjusting, pivoting, doing all that. You already hear the passion in me. That's, that's exactly, as soon as it happened, I was like, okay, what do we have to do? And I just went into that survival mode, right? And you can't discount, you know, self-care when you're going through these changes and stuff like that, right? I have a meditation practice, right? We should be exercising. This is really a new temporary reality. Maintain that focus that it is temporary, that we are getting out of this. But while it's temporary, what I was really focused on is like, what do we rarely get to do either as a business, as a worker or as a family? Like my family has eaten dinner every night together for the last two months. We've never ever 
would have been able to do that before. I mean, those are the silver linings in, in all of this. And, you know, it's been great, as, which is why I started off saying what I was saying, because it's a terrible thing. But these are the silver linings. This is what, you know, and, and we're all going through those realizations, like how are we each going to be different for our family? Like, what have we, what have we each done during this time that's going to make a difference? I've told my, my team, pick one thing you do for an hour a day. At the end of this, you'll have, you know, 50, 60 hours of, of time dedicated on something that you can become really good at that one thing. I said it to my kids too, pick one thing, paint, just do one thing, focus on one thing. Um, so I like creating positivity by narrowing focus down and spending time and putting hours in so that there's something productive at the end of this. What I didn't want to happen was to go through all this time and not have anything to show for it, or not have any like realizations, just be like, oh, it would have been good if I did X, Y, or Z, right? But for me personally, um, I really focused on my business. And I do that a lot as a business owner. And, and we say these words all the time of, you know, working uh, on our business instead of in our business, right? As CEO of company, right? Really, really, really important to do. So I've been focused on my company, uh, growing a lot of facets of it in terms of uh, things that we do in terms of marketing and video and content, working on websites, uh, getting ourselves ready for, for whatever it's going to be new. And we started off this conversation talking about just how, you know, virtual deals and closings and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Efficiencies to bring to our marketplace of what we do every day. It's going to make it better, right? In my previous life, right, I was doing transactions, 300, 400, 500 million dollars. All of our deals were done with wires and, and escrows. And we never went to a closing. I signed everything or it was digital, or, right? Residential closings, you, you go to the closing. It takes five hours, right? It's just, why are we spending that time, right? Where now COVID has caused us to be more efficient, which is a very, very, very good thing. But you have to bring the attorneys along. You have to bring the clients along, whether it's Zoom calls or getting comfortable with doing X, Y, or Z, right? So those are all changes. Those are all really efficient. Um, but it's having the mindset to like look through the prism in this way of like what could be good coming out of this and then just working on those things. That's in a nutshell how I've been able to really stay positive. Like this is one of the biggest things that the world's had to face. United States has had to face. You're right there in the epicenter of it. And yet you, you, you already had a, a company, but you've launched this new brand, right? And gone and taken that company into another direction and whatnot in the middle of it, and yet can stay this positive. And that's a shining example of what everybody ought to be doing. You know, I'm the same way, Tony's the same way. We're eternal optimists. And like you said, we have to acknowledge how bad things are, but we also have to stay positive that it's gonna be better in the future because if we just wallow in that misery, it just tends to create more of it, right? So yeah. you have a one minute breathing exercise or something to help you focus. Is that right? Yeah. So that's called one minute breath. Um, I've been meditating and doing one minute breath for about 2000 days at this point, which is about five to six years. I really started when I was 25 years old. It was a uh, more of a, a morning prayer of gratefulness saying thank you, which really grew into a meditation once I knew what meditation was. Um, me, we were on vacation with my family, and it was the first day of vacation. And I just said, today's the day I'm going to start this meditation. And I am a natural athlete, and uh, while I love to play sports, I'm not someone who loves to like exercise. I'll ride bike or do something like that. But meditation to me is all about breathing. And I think breathing is really the most important thing that we can do. So one minute breath is a, is a meditation where you inhale for a certain amount of time, you hold it for a certain amount of time, and then exhale for a certain amount of time. Now, it's called one, one minute breath because uh, in one minute, you have 20 second intervals. 20 seconds, you exhale for 20 seconds, uh, you hold it for 20 seconds, then you exhale. So when I started out, 
I started out, I believe, doing it for five second intervals. Um, and I did it for three minutes. And when you inhale for five seconds, at least for me, it felt a little short, meaning there's a transition point where you have to change from inhale to hold to exhale. It was a little short. So I actually started out at about eight seconds and I did that for um, 31 minutes my first time. And the first time I did it when I was done, I was just, when I finished it, it was better than playing any sport or athletic game that I ever played in my life. I was exhausted for brief 31 minutes, but the clarity that I had, I was just like, at, like it was like a light went off inside of me and I'm like, oh my God, this is really something special. I did not know what it meant, but it's like one of those things, like after you work out in the gym, you want to go back to the gym, regardless of if you lost weight, do you feel stronger? Like it's the chemicals that go on inside your body. Yeah, and I was just like, I can't wait for tomorrow to do this again, right? And I did it. And what, what ended up happening was I increased the five second intervals up to 20 seconds. It took me a little over 250 days to get to um, getting to 20 seconds. But the benefits of getting to 20 seconds, or even if all you did was five second intervals for 11 minutes a day, whatever it is, the, the benefits of the meditation like this is that to sit there, and I do this at 5.30 in the morning, right? There's the ambrosial hour of between four and seven, right? Most people do their workouts or stuff in the morning. And I was talking about morning routine earlier. To have that type of morning routine, most people do it at that time because things are still, it's before the day gets going or whatever. So that time to just spend yourself. And I didn't know what I'm about to talk to you about. I just decided to start that day. Um, but what I started to realize as I started to do this was there was such heightened intuition that I was able to garner from this on a day in day out basis, because I was able to reflect on that breath because I love the way that it made me felt and the openness that it created for me from doing that every day was really important. Obviously, there's de-stressing and all that, which you get from motivation, which, I mean, meditation, which most people, you know, that's why they gravitate towards it because, oh, you're stressed, you got to meditate, right? That is a great reason to do it, but there are a, a variety of other reasons to do it as well. Some of the main ones are to actually spend 31 minutes with yourself in silence, like, amazing thing to do. It's great to do with another human being, like just to share space and time with someone without even talking, right? That's like a really nice thing to do. That's more mindfulness than it is meditation, right? That's like a really special thing to do. I do it with my kids, my daughters all the time. They can be doing work or homework. I'll go into their room, sit down, and just spend time there. And eventually they'll start talking to me and it's about something that's important to them. And as a dad, that's like a really special thing to do. And I love doing that because there's no, there's nothing predetermined on my part other than just to like be there and to have that conversation start is really, really special. So, so I love doing that. Right. But here I'm doing this with myself and you have conversations with yourself when that happens. Right. You start to be like, Oh my God, what am I doing? Like just get up already. This is good. Why are you just sitting here breathing? Because what's happening is your brain is sending you all those thoughts. That's what you want to control, right? Because when you're typically sitting in your living room and you're like, oh my God, I got to go do the laundry. I got to go do, forget about that. You're sitting in your living room. You may have friends over. Why are you thinking about the laundry? Why are you thinking about the, the, the business meeting you have tomorrow? There's always time to think. About that. Be in the moment. So that's what it trains you to do. It trains you to really be in the moment, focus on yourself, and train your mind to always come back to the breath and not think about all those thoughts. I wake up at five o'clock and I do this meditation. So now I'm doing it on Facebook Live and an amazing thing for me and what I'm experiencing right now and I'm so happy about is that getting up and doing this alone, I have to tap in, which I, I don't mind, tap into like the universe of people that are meditating or exercise and you know, it if you're thinking about that and you want to tap into it for that motivation, you know, it takes energy and strength to sort of do that. But you do feel those vibrations, right? 
now by, by being live, I've like opened it up and like people are with me. Like I've had four people one day, 11 people another day. And you know, I try to type to them, ask them if they have any questions. And I told them, don't worry about interrupting me. I'm doing it with people. And it's like through the internet. Which so now there's like real connectivity, which has made it so much more real for me. And I'm not alone anymore, right? I love it. I love it. You know, yeah. which brings us to, uh, to uh, the next question is, you know, you've talked about how it helps you personally and how you've shared that with other people just for the personal aspect of things. But the, another question is, you know, talk about how it has, how your mindfulness and meditative exercises have really helped you secure business because it does work that way. It definitely does work that way. And it's all part of, I guess, what you've heard people talk about, the finite or the infinite mindset. Like for me, and using the sports analogy again, um, you know, we always use visualization in sports. You see athletes, you know, practicing foul shots, you know, closing their eyes, or, you know, you see baseball players, you know, with their swing, tennis players using visualization. I'm a true believer that we are what we believe, or we are like what we think about. Um, that's a really big thing for anyone in business or any industry. It's sort of like an example. People will resonate with this, which is, you know, Instagram or Facebook, right? They have algorithms. If you're looking on Facebook and you like dogs, whatever it is, and you're swiping and, and you love dogs, you love dogs, they're sending you dogs to look at. Like right. that's the way it works. It's just both those social media platforms. It's the way they're designed. It's the way your mind works too when you just bought a car and you're like, oh my God, everyone now has that Jeep. I just bought this Jeep. I never this Jeep. <laughs> now everyone's got this Jeep, right? It's because your mind is doing that to you. So if your mind could do that to you and if the you know software engineers are smart enough to send you dogs, if you're looking at dogs, right? It's the same type of thing, right? We are what we believe, right? And our behavior is you know, belief driven. And if we use that as like a superpower for ourselves, there's no limit, right? And we put limits on ourselves. That's what we do. We're constantly putting limits. I'm not good enough. I'm too tired. Uh, you can come up with excuses. They're all excuses, right? No excuses. Set bigger goals. Set goals and then, you know, multiply them by 5%, uh, uh, five times. Those are now your goals, right? Just shoot further, shoot farther, right? They have to be realistic, right? But just have bigger goals, have big, visualize yourself doing things that you really want to do. It is more likely to happen. Every moment is an interview, right? Talking to you guys, right? You guys could be, you know, friends with X, Y, or Z and be like, you got to meet this guy, Bobby. He is just so unbelievable, regardless of if I want any opportunities or not. But if you're looking at every situation as an opportunity or as an interview, because you never know, like we're on, we're all just like one phone call or one introduction away from our life just completely changing. Yeah, that's absolutely right? correct. So true. You have to put yourself in those situations. And that's what it comes down to is just being open, yep. being mindful of your situation. I want to say something about, really back about the focus of that, you know what I mean? When you were talking about how the meditation helps you to focus and it gets rid of so much of that, you know, junk, noise, mind, just voices in your head, you know, and all that, um, that also helps you prioritize what's important, right? Uh, not, not just what's important in our personal lives, but in business also, it can help declutter. Cause I tell people all the time, I'm like, you cannot uh, sacrifice the important for the immediate. You know, and so many times we can get hit with this, 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 and everybody's telling us it's immediate, it's immediate, it's immediate, and we can get turned off. And what, when, if we don't have good focus and good parameters to, to filter that, to say, no, that's not immediate, that can be handled tomorrow, the next day, five days from now, you know, the important is the immediate, then uh, you see all of that begin to change also. Which, which segues into my question I want to ask you about how you've kept moving. And you sort of talked about this earlier, uh, but I want you to expound on it a little bit more, how you've kept moving with building your brand during this particular time 
um, even though you're in that highly affected area where you're literally, y'all are literally quarantined. You know, some, I, I'm in Georgia, so we're only like, we pretty much have opened up under, under uh, uh, you know, phases now. And I think we're in phase two or something of so many other things that can be open and be out, but you guys are still quarantined. How are you, you know, using all of that to move that brand forward? And going through the process and going through your system and with your help and sort of, you know, I gave you a ton of information and you guys are able to distill it. Purpose-driven performance is my brand identifier, right? And my elevator pitch uh, sort of is experienced New York real estate with passion, precision, and purpose, right? But purpose-driven performance, three really, really strong words. Now, while I, I knew I was launch this, I didn't know how and in what way. So to answer your question before getting into the detail of how I've expanded just purpose-driven performance into a, you know, a Venn diagram and how I use this and how I could explain it to others right now is I knew I wanted to use all the collaterals we were making and use it to uh, uh, further my business. And I knew I wanted to build a website for recruiting and for you know, bringing in business listings with sellers. So I needed all of you know, the photos and the collaterals and everything we designed together to use for that. So it was a very seamless thing. Like the company that I ended up working with, when they asked me for, you know, can you send me a logo and this, I sent them like a ton of stuff. And they're like, oh my God, how do you have all this stuff? Right? It was just, I knew what I was doing. It was planned out. It was thoughtful for whatever. So like I had thought it through from a high level. I didn't know exactly what I was going to do, but I knew, uh, and going through the process with you, it, it all crystallized with me. I needed to finish the process with you and, and then get on to building the website and sort of launching those two, uh, different things, the recruiting and, um, you know, uh, uh, for seller listings. Everything is about mindset, being mindful and all of that. So I know what a Venn diagram is and I've, I've never used a built one before, but I, I, I put that right in the middle. The other sections are words that I've said to you guys over and over again during our thing, but I, I didn't force it. I wanted to see how this came together. When you have purpose and, you ha and you're driven, right? You can tell from me, through this conversation, right? Like I can inspire many people on virtually about anything, right? I know what my purpose is and I'm very driven, right? So I can tell the story and inspire others. I'm able to do that for my agents and we can get into tactics and all that type of stuff. So seem to fit right there. Um, when someone is driven and they're performance oriented, right? It takes motivation to make that happen. So I was like, okay, this is actually really working. When you're performing based on your purpose, you're performing, that's execution. I'm like, I can't believe this is really coming out like that either. <laughs> I love it. I when love it happened, it. it happened. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, all right, well, there's more to purpose driven performance, right? So what are other words I could use to further help? Because some people, when they hear those together, would be like purpose driven performance. I don't know what that means. And I actually like that because it gives me an opportunity to explain it in so many different ways. You have to breathe your brand, which is why today's topic is so awesome, because actually that'll be the, that'll be the title of this Be Bold breathe Branding brand. episode. Breathe your brand. I love it's it. It's a one-minute breath. <laughs> but this is just another example of breathing that brand because you felt all three of those words. And yep. those three words mean something apart, and they mean something together. And I love the way you express that, Bobby. So thank you for going that extra mile to really, really pull it all together. And we're so excited that you have so much passion about this. Absolutely. I hope that you guys have learned so much today. I know I have. I know I explained to Bobby before we got on here how I did my breathing exercises and I was doing them wrong. So I'll be correcting that. And I hope to join you, Bobby, on one of your 5.30 a.m. I may be a little bit later than that, but <laughs> I will join you soon on one of your uh, meditative mornings. So we so appreciate you, Bobby, and everything you bring to the table and, and bless you and your family. And I know it's a, it's a difficult situation there. You were in, as Michael said, the epicenter of COVID. 
and uh, and we wish you and your family all the best. Stay safe and healthy, and you know, keep breathing. Keep keep breathing that brand. Likewise, back to you guys. I really appreciate it. And to anyone, everyone that's listening, you're all welcome to show up between 5.30 and 6 o'clock any morning. I will definitely be there. Um, and if you know any family or friends that are interested or need it, please share with them. Anyone can show up. I'm happy to share this with anyone and everyone. So I, I really encourage that. All right. Well, guys, if you would like to learn some more about um, personal branding and even more about Bobby, join our Facebook group that is dedicated to personal branding. Uh, it's called Build Your Real Estate Brand if you're a real estate professional. If you are a business owner or entrepreneur, that Facebook group is called Build Your Business Star Brand. So join us there, guys. That's right, folks. And, uh, you know, if you want to just talk about anything else to do with branding, you can go to discussyourbrand.com discussyourbrand.com. And you know, folks, I want to say, uh, I say this all the time uh, at the end of the shows, but Bobby's a living proof of what I'm fixing to say uh, because of how we've described how he is right there in the middle of what's going on in New York, you know, the hardest hit of all of this mess. Um, and he's thriving and he's thriving mentally and he's also thriving in his business and he's moving forward and he's got that good positive outlook. He's very aware of everything going on. But he is also very aware that we're going to get past it uh, and, uh, and that there is brighter days ahead. We know we call that prosperity. And we know, folks, that uh, when we talk about prosperity, we're talking about the full 360 of an abundant life. He's a very prime example of that. We know that prosperity favors the bold. So we say be bold, folks, especially with your brand and stay bold. Thank you, Miss Tanya. And thank you, Mr. Bobby. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. You bet. Thank you, gentlemen. And guys, we'll see you next time on Be Bold Brands.